正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 225. Jin Xing Ming, Shen Miao did not speak. Zi Jing Xing did not release her and locked her in his arms. After a long time. Shen Miao raised her head to look at him. Zi Jing Xing also stared at her. This seemingly arrogant man, who did not care about anything from when he was a stubborn teenager till now, seemed to have a little nervousness in his eyes at this moment when looking at her. Shen Miao's heart moved, and in a short moment, she suddenly smiled. She said, "Then what good is there for me?" Zi Jing Xing was startled, and there was joy in the bottom of his eyes, and seemed to give a sigh of relief. Mixed with some disbelief, he said, "What do you want? I will give you all if what I want is also what you want." Shen Miao said. Zi Jing Xing raised an eyebrow. "What do you want? You choose thirteen mounts belong to you." He waved his hands straightforwardly, as if what Shen Miao was talking about was just a plaything like rouge. Mobs ding you on city belong to you. Zi Jing Xing did not even blink. Southern Jiangsu Province. Western Xi's East Seas, Lenin's King Lake, Lu Yang's ancient city, all belong to you. Zi Jing Xing replied smoothly, like he had not thought about it at all. If Emperor Yang Le heard this, one feared that he would be vomiting blood due to anger, and if Emperor Zhao Wu was here, one feared that he would be so angry that he would come alive to scold Zi Jing Xing, a rebel, and arrest Shen Miao with a crime of an evil female destroying a country. But Zi Jing Xing was not one who cared about others' view at all. It was also true that Shen Miao would not really control Zi Jing Xing's empire. She only just felt that Zi Jing Xing was carrying too much responsibility and wanted to distract him. Thus, she made a joke so that he would feel a little relax. If all belong to me, then what do you want? Shen Miao asked. Zi Jing Xing smiled naughtily and said mischievously, "Thirteen times a night." Shen Miao was dumbfounded. Zi Jing Xing pulled Shen Miao away and said, "Furen, you cannot not want me." Shen Miao said, "Your energy level is so exuberant." I will let Tang Shu give you some ice to decrease the internal heat. Zi Jing Xing put her down and said slowly, "With Furen here, why is there still the need for ice?" Kong Yang, who was outside, was covering his ears and revealed an expression of pain. It was Jing's, who was passing by, saw his expression and went forward with kind intentions. Guard Yang, why are you trembling that violently? Could it be that you are sick? As she was speaking, she reached her hands out to touch Kong Yang's forehead. Kong Yang was after a young man and was forced to listen to such living spring words that at this moment his face and ears were red. To have a small ice cold hand covering his forehead when he was unguarded, he jumped from the ground in a moment and scared Jing's. Jing's looked at her own hand. I, what happened? Kong Yang looked at her like he had seen a ghost and suddenly ran away like his bottoms were on fire, leaving Jing's alone at the original spot. Tai Yi, who was up on the tree, saw everything but did not say anything and instead had an expression of understanding everything clearly as he sat quietly hugging his sword under the tree. Tang Shu walked by and when he saw that the doors were tightly closed. A satisfied smile was revealed, and he went to instruct the kitchens to brew tonics. In the next few days, Zi Jingxing indeed started to be busier. Most likely because of the aggravated condition of Emperor Yongle, Zi Jingxing had to personally deal with the Lu families and the Yi families' matters. Thus, Zi Jingxing would leave early and return late. Zi Jingxing was busy, and Shen Miao was not idle. The Lu family and the Yi family had been staying in Longyi for so many years, and now that the Imperial family kill one as an example to others, one could not make the Imperial family look overly cold, as the officials would be dissent in the future. Shen Miao took up this responsibilities and chat with those noble Furens of official families in Longyi to subtly pass some thoughts to them. These noble Furens were females, but in a residence. The roles of females were essentials. Originally, everyone had thought that Shen Miao was a person of Mingqi, and since Mingqi and Great Liang were two different countries, there were many things that were different. Shen Miao was a daughter from a family with military lineage, so there would not be any insight from her. Who knew that after interacting, they all had a different perspective of Shen Miao. Not only she could speak well. She also seemed to have a lot of knowledge about things they did not know. When one spoke of the style of clothes, 
Shen Miao could keep up when speaking about the overall political situation. Shen Miao could also keep up even all those strange matters around. She could also speak about it actually in the last lifetime in the inner palace of Ming Chi, even though it was not very good. It after all increased her knowledge and exposure thus she could also speak of other strange matters in other countries. The more one knew, naturally the more one could use. When some things were used on some matters, there would be excellent results. The things that Zi Jingsheng could do, Shen Miao might not be able to do it but in the area of intricate interest and gains to achieve one's goal without any change was precisely Shen Miao's strength in this rebirth. In just a few days, those noble furans were in a fiery relation with Shen Miao. Some things were not seen on surface but they had started to ask for Shen Miao's decision. This would also include the problems that arise from the current situation. First Shen Miao was the Huang Pei of the residence of Prince Rui and with the ties to the imperial family, they would be able to know the imperial family's current attitude and second, even though Shen Miao was young, and was even younger than those Furin's daughters by a few years, she expressed a special feeling and was very gentle and calm, making others feel that her words are very convincing. Shen Miao and Xi Jingxing were working hard with the upcoming resurgence in Long Yi but truthfully, the Lu family and Yi family were also not sitting still. The Lu family had lost a daughter and seeing that Emperor Yang Le's attitude was getting tougher, they finally began to panic and started to mobilize their privately owned people that were raised all over. The Yi family that started off sitting on the fence and suddenly found that their position was not decided by themselves. Unknowingly they had already been dragged down by the Lu family and even though they did not do anything, the attitude of the imperial family started to change. From the previous enticing to the current indulgence, it seemed to be speaking of something. Every action of Yi Mai was monitored by Mo King in the dark by Shen Miao. In these days, because of the big incident that Yi Mai created in the palace, it made Yi Mao Kai furious. Yi Mai's actions had offended both Emperor Yongle and the Lu family. It was still alright with the Lu family as even though Lu Zhengyi was arrogant, he did not have much brains and would depend on his old reputation but it was different for Emperor Yongle. The young emperor have lighting type methods and because he did not blame Yi Mai, it made Yi Mao Kai even more uneasy as he felt that Emperor Yongle was brewing something up. Yi Mao Kai was angered by Yi Mai and confined Yi Mai for many days and also treated her quite coldly. Yi Mai had been feeling uncomfortable for these days and the confinement was finally lifted today. To compensate her, Yi Furan brought here to a jewelry store she owned to select some jewelry. Who knew that there would be noble guests that visited the Yi residence and Yi Furan could only return. Because this was one of her store, she was not scared and left Yi Mai alone to select the jewelry before returning. The shopkeeper of the jewelry shop had a pleased expression and took out the most expensive pieces for Yi Mai to select. Yi Mai had a wan expression and her heart was not on it. Thus it made that shopkeeper feel a little anger. She was only a daughter of a merchant family and it was already a great fortune that the Yi family recognized her as one of them. She even dared to be choosy and not even take a glance at these jewelry. One did not know what kind of wealth would be able to enter her eyes. Yi Mai did not notice the shopkeeper's expression as she was extremely angry in her heart about Yi Mao Kai's cold treatment but also became more aware that the Yi family was not a place to stay for a long time. Yi Mao Kai was on who only cared about his interest and because of it, he could sacrifice her. She initially wanted to make use of the Yi family to climb up but who knew that her strange was not enough and she could only become a chess piece. The route that Yi Mao Kai planned for her was not at all what Yi Mai wanted. Her gaze swept across those dazzling array of jewelry but her mind was thinking of how to escape. If she fled, where would she flee to? Just as she was thinking about it, Two people came into the jewelry shop. It was a male and female. The male was about 30 years old, dress wealthy but had an average appearance and was slightly fat. The female was however young and was dressed brightly and upon entering, there was a strong fragrance. At one glance, one could tell that she was a female from the brothel. That female said whiningly, 
the bracelet that Darren buy for me must be solid gold. That male smiled and said generously, you can just pick any today. This lord is in a good mood. Whichever family's son who brought a female from the brothel here would be suffering. The shopkeeper was somewhat not satisfied when seeing ye my absent-mindedness and now that new customers had entered. He immediately left Yi Mai and brought the few jewelry that he was showing to Yi Mai to the female in all smiles, these are all newly arrived. Young lady can take a look. That female went to Yi Mai's side and the fragrance was so unpleasant to Yi Mai that she turned around to look at the female and could not help but also saw the man by the female's side. That male also saw her and was startled before speaking with joy. My er, the female that was selecting jewelry looked up and looked warningly at Yi Mai. The shopkeeper's ears also pricked up as this person actually called Yi Mai as my er, so naturally he had some relations to Yi Mai. Moreover, Yi Mai was a merchant daughter initially. Yi Mai was somewhat avoiding his eyes and wanted to leave when she suddenly thought of something and her feet paused. She looked at the shopkeeper and suddenly said, Since we have encountered, Let's step aside to chat. This was something that the guy wanted. The female beside tugged that male's sleeves and said, Darren, you still have to accompany this servant to select jewelry. That man became impatient and grabbed a few bank notes and threw it to the female, see as you deem fit. When that female obtained the bank notes, she did not continue being entangled. That male left with Yi Mai and Yi Mai put on the veil. Look for a restaurant then. In one of the elegant room of a restaurant, the male looked at Yi Mai and asked in wonder, Why do you have so many guards by your side? At that time, you and brother Yi disappeared from Ken province without saying a word and I even sent people to look for a long time. One did not expect that you will come here. Yi Mai's heart was playing drums. This person was not other people and could be considered as her childhood sweetheart. Initially the Li family was a merchant family in Ken province and this male was the eldest son of the Jin family. Jin Xing Ming. The Jin family was also a merchant family and Master Jin had close relations with Master Li. When Yi Mai was young, Jin Xing Ming was already a youth. Master Jin would also joke to want Yi Mai to marry to Jin Xing Ming. Yi Mai was one who thinks highly of herself since young thus it was not her final goal to marry to a merchant. However even though she disliked Jin Xing Ming greatly, she was smart and did not show it to Jin Xing Ming and instead was very considerate and well behaved, that Jin Xing Ming became fascinated with her so much that she could play him in her palm. Afterwards the husband and wife of the Li family passed on and several shops were taken care by the Jin family. Yi Mai was even more considerate of Jin Xing Ming. Master Jin had planned to bring up her marriage but since the husband and wife of the Li family was no longer present, the decision maker was Yi Mai herself. Naturally Yi Mai was not willing. In her heart, she would rather be a low concubine of an official than to be the wife of a merchant. Just at this time, the Yi family appeared and they hid of well. Thus Yi Mai came to Long Yi with Yi. Because of her dislike of the Jin family, she did not even inform the Jin family. Naturally Jin Xing Ming did not know that she came to Long Yi and who knew that they would encounter one another in Long Yi. Her heart quickly did a calculation. Yi Mai shook her head and sighed. When I was with the Yi family, one would be taken care by the Jin family and second younger brother would live rather well. Who knew that suddenly someone came to our doors and said that my real parents were someone else and I am actually the daughter of the Prime Minister's Yi family. I had suspicion and shock in my heart and they did not give me any time to explain and took me away. Prime Minister's Yi family? Jin Xing Ming shouted out in surprise, is it that Prime Minister Yi of Long Yi? Yi Mai nodded her head. But after arriving, I then discover that they had made a mistake. It's just that you also know that the Yi family only have a inconvenienced young master and they had made a big fanfare searching for their kin. So making a mistake equates to slapping their face thus they insisted on me becoming the Yi family's young lady. I initially thought to let it be but who knew that the Prime Minister Yi was a person with a beast's heart and he, he want to use me as a leverage for his career making using of my marriage to win others over. Her tears started falling. She had a beautiful appearance thus with such an action. She looked so pitiful that Jin Xing Ming's heart shattered upon seeing it. Jin Xing Ming said angrily, 
how could he be like this? One cannot be this heartless to a female much less you are not his daughter at all so how could he grasp your marriage? How hateful. Let's go, we will report this. It is useless. Yi Mai shook her head, official would protect their own, not to mention in Long Yi. Yi Mao Kai could cover the skies with his hand. I thought of writing to you in Ken province but who knew that even the letters were blocked. Actually second younger brother and I are already been detained by the Yi family. It is rare that one can go out today. Jin Xingming was so angry that his face became very ugly. He was very fond of Yi Mian when Yi Mian brother disappeared. Master Jin said that it was because Yi Mai did not want to marry thus she ran away. Jin Xingming was somewhat angry and now that she cried like pear flowers and rain, how would Jin Xingming be still angry? He only scolded himself silently for not discovering Yi Mai's situation earlier. Yi Mai raised her head to speak, these days, that passed. I have been thinking of older brother Jin constantly and hope that one day one would be able to recover one's freedom. Older brother Jin, can you help me? Jin Xingming nodded his head, yes. What can I do? Older brother Jin, currently I don't ask for anything else and only wish that you can help me to leave the Yi family. Yi Mai smiled with tears, to be with older brother Jin. I will not need to be filled with worry daily. Older brother Jin's face almost melted by Yi Mai's words. One had to know previously Yi Mai treated him gently but was different from now. She had never spoken so clearly, and would often look at him with a screen, making on unable to see clearly her attitude. But now her words had clearly indicated that Yi Mai saw him as a very important person. Even though he felt some fluttering, Jin Xingming did not lose his rational thinking. The Yi family was the family of a prime minister and he was only a gentleman from a merchant family. This, the Yi family is very tricky issue. Yi Mai did not speak and instead just looked at him with a pair of beautiful eyes. Jin Xingming's heart swayed, it is not that there is no way. My er, do you know why did I come to Long Yi? Yi Mai shook her head. She did not even care about Jin Xingming and only actively talked to him today so that she could use him to get away from the Yi family. So how could she be able to think of this additional layer? Jin Xingmi said proudly, I have a friend, who is also a merchant, which went to Mingqi last year. One heard that he had built a relation with the imperial merchant at Mingqi's side and perhaps able to obtain an official post. I had thought that instead of being an ordinary merchant in Ken province for an entire lifetime, it would be better to go out to try one's luck. That friend also invited me along. I came to Long Yi to settle a few family businesses before having a discussion with that friend. Initially I was still very hesitant. Jin Xingming said, After all, father and mother are here but now that I have encountered my er, I do not have any worries. I have decided to head for Ming Qi's Ding Capital. I do not think of being an official but one would definitely earn more. He said, the Yi family could cover heavens with their hand but if one flee to Ming Qi, the Yi family's hand would not be able to extend so far. My er, what do you think? Yi Mai's heart moved. In the time of Jin Sheng Ming's speech, her heart had quickly calculated everything. Even though some things were not thought out clearly, she smiled and said, Naturally it is good. Older brother Jin, you are indeed my Er's pillar. All the people in this world cannot be relied upon but fortunately there is still older brother Jin. She was tender, gentle and had thousands of romantic styles that made Jin Sheng Ming's heart jump and uncontrollably reached out to touch Yi Mai's little hand. Yi Mai forcefully endured her nausea and allowed Jin Sheng Ming to take advantage. If it was the past, she naturally need not do it but currently, she had no choice but to make a compromise. Xin Miao just came out from a Furan's residence as she participated in a tea party today. Those Furans had gradually spoke of Shen Miao's influence and Zi Jingxing also mentioned that the court was now much calmer. She rubbed her neck and was about to get into the carriage when she saw in the tea house not far from the streets, 
a male and female walked out in tandem. That female was covered in a face veil and one was unable to see her face but Shen Miao had dealt with her for an entire lifetime and could recognize that it was Yi Mai with just her footsteps and posture. It looked like the male that Yi Mai was talking to was very close with her but Shen Miao was very sharp when looking at another. This male did not seem to be from noble families due to his etiquette and behaviors. He however revealed some vulgarity when walking and perhaps might be a merchant. Shen Miao turned sideways so that the carriage's shadows blocked her and Yi Mai would not be able to see her. That male spoke to Yi Mai some more and even though there was no inappropriate actions, these two people's relationship was far from normal. Yi Mai quickly left in a carriage and the male turned to leave in another direction. Shen Miao thought of it for a moment and instructed Mo King. Follow that man and inquire clearly all about him. Mo King these days had been secretly monitoring Yi Mai and it was natural for Shen Miao to get him to inquire about that male who seemed to have some relations with Yi Mai. Mo King complied and left. Shen Miao got into the carriage but her heart began to sink. That male did not look noble and Shen Miao understood Yi Mai very clearly that she valued the status of others and would not speak to civilians. However she was with this male and perhaps even drank tea with him. Yi Mai always use all the people around her, especially males. Shen Miao could think that perhaps Yi Mai wanted to make use of this male to achieve a goal else a proud person like her would not be bothered to talk to a such a lowly man like this. What did she want to do? When Yi Mai returned to the Yi residences, it was already in the evening. Yi Mao Kei, who usually returned very late, was unprecedentedly back in the residence very early. Upon seeing her entering, he stared and asked her, Where did you go? Perhaps because these days the Yi family was facing some difficulties, Yi Mao Kai who is usually like a fish in water also started to feel some difficulties. His forbearing towards female was spent that the tone and expression started to become gloomy. Yi Mai composed herself, Mother let me go to the jewelry shop to pick a few jewelry up. Mother? Yi Mao Kai retorted. Yi Mai was unhappy with his peculiar words and tone. Yi Mao Kai obviously knew that she was not Yi Furin's flesh and blood but at the start it wanted Yi Mai to pretend to be her. Now it become like Yi Mai was the one who used all her efforts and brains to enter the Yi family as their young lady. Seeing Yi Mai not speaking, Yi Mao Kai asked, and the jewelry, Yi Mai said, was not interested in any thus one did not pick any. You are sure self-aware and know that one cannot just take things that one do not own. Yi Mao Kai's words has another meaning to it and he suddenly changed topic, who is that male that you meet on the streets today? Yi Mai was startled before feeling anger. Needless to say, it must be the actions of Yi Residence's guards that accompanied her. Those guards seemed to protect her safety on the surface but it was not so as they monitored her and inform Yi Mao Kai of her every actions. Even so, Yi Mai did not dare to be angry with Yi Mao Kei. He is a gentleman that one knew in Qin province before and he had a deep relationship with my family. If father do not believe it, do send people to investigate his background. Jin Xing Ming was just a descendant of a merchant family so even if Yi Mao Kai investigated, there would not be anything to be found. When Yi Mao Kai saw her speaking so calmly, his expression became relaxed. Don't think that I do not care about others' feelings when doing things. It is just that there would soon be a big move in Long Yi. Since you a daughter of the Yi family, each of your actions will be seen by others. If that brings in calamity for the Yi family, both you and the Yi family will suffer. He then smiled gently, since you're a smart child, then one should know what should be done and what cannot be done. The Yi family and you are tied together so naturally one have to help the other. When Yi Mai heard Yi Mao Kai's words, her hearty was heavy again and the more she firm she became that Yi Mao Kai was using her to achieve a goal. She had a plan in her heart and thus said a few more words with Yi Mao Kai before returning to her room. Upon returning to the room, she then discovered that Yik was already waiting in the room. When Yik saw that she had returned, he smiled, Older sister, where did you go today and why did you only return now? I have been waiting for you for a long time. Yi Mai felt upset and waited to tell Yik about Jin Xing Ming's matter. When they were in Qin province, Yik actually hoped that Jin Xing Ming to be his Jifu, older sister's husband, 
so that the Jin family could take care of the Li family. It was just that at that time Yi Mai's heart was not on Jin Xingming. Yi had also persuaded her for a long time and said that Jin Xingming would treat her well. Now if she wanted to follow Jin Xingming and flee to Mingqi, naturally she would bring Yi along. However Yi Mai was still somewhat uncertain of Yi's attitude towards it. Do you remember Jin Xingming of the Jing family in Jin province? Yi Mai asked, Jin Xingming? Yi looked suspiciously at her, remembered but why suddenly mention about him? He suddenly thought about something and stood up in shock, older sister, it cannot be that you suddenly thought about it and want to marry him now. Yi Mai frowned, did you not like him initially? Initially we are in a merchant family but now we are in an official family. Yi said, older sister, with your current identity. How would Jin Xingming be compatible with you? One fear that it would be a joke when it is spread that a merchant family marries a daughter of an official family. He was very agitated and Yi Mai asked him after watching him for a while, then who do you think I should marry to? Older sister, with your identity, it is not overboard to marry a prince but there is no prince in Long Yi. He approached mysteriously and smiled. Actually father has the intention for you to enter the palace. I have taken a look for you. The emperor is young, handsome and treats the empress coldly. If you enter the palace, with your beauty and talents, one fear that at the end the six palaces would be in your hands. At that time, both of us siblings would be endlessly rich. As Yik spoke, his eyes were shining, seemingly yearning towards the future he spoke like those who finally saw a treasure after excavating a long time. Oh? Yi Mai looked at him, you really think so? Older sister, since when have you become so unconfident? Yi patted his chest, trust me, you will definitely become the noblest female in Great Liang. So listen to father and enter the palace, father would not harm you. After entering the palace there is also the Yi family backing you up so isn't this a great thing? Yi Mai smiled but that smile was somewhat strange, second younger brother, these days you seem to be very busy. Can you tell older sister what are you busy with? Father plans to give me an official position in Long Yi. Yik's brows danced as he spoke, these days he brought me around to see his colleagues. When his voice landed, he suddenly realized something and stopped talking immediately as he looked at Yi Mai with some panic. Yi Mai's expression did not change and she nodded her head, so it is as such. 